So, the singularity. Well, it's this uh, concept, it's uh, kind of interesting. Ray Kurzweil's a big champion of it. Uh, he's a futurist, real smart guy. He says that as technology advances, we're going to be able to design better technology through the next generation until we get to a point where computers will be designing their own successors. And each generation between two generations of computers will get shorter. The, the span of time between the two will decrease until you get a point where you're just having constant evolution, at which point we're going to have some sort of evolutionary change as human beings. We'll, we will either merge with computers or perhaps we will find a way to biologically alter ourselves to make ourselves more than human. We'll have to redefine what it is to be human at that point. And one of the byproducts of this process might be something called digital immortality. This is a concept where we manage to extend our lives indefinitely. Maybe we turn off the genes that govern aging. Maybe we port our consciousness over into computers. Don't really know what that would be at this point. Anyway, Kurzweil thinks that this is going to happen within his lifetime, within the next maybe 20 to 30 years, and that all he has to do is live long enough, and then he'll live forever. I have a bone to pick with you, Mr. Kurzweil. I'm not so sure about this. You see, this is going to have a lot of difficult philosophical implications that are not easy to explain away. What do we do with the population problem if we all live forever? What happens if it's an expensive procedure? Does that mean that we have two classes of people, the rich immortals and then everybody else who still has to continue through their normal lives and die? What does this mean for religion? What does this mean for, for social interactions? I think that these questions are much more pressing and more difficult to answer than the technological issue, which is still really up in the air. So Kurzweil, uh, hey, give me a call. Let me know what's going on, because right now, I'm just not seeing it. So let's argue uh, that it will be possible to port our consciousness over into some sort of digital framework. So we are able to put ourselves into a computer. There's still some big questions that we need to answer. For example, if we're copying ourselves, does that just mean that we've duplicated ourselves? That now there is a digital version of ourselves? So for me, it'd be Jonathan 2.0. Well, if Jonathan 2.0 exists in the digital realm, what happens to Jonathan 1.0? Presumably, I'm still alive in my fleshy, meaty body, and presumably I will still grow old and die. Well, how will my digital counterpart handle that? I know that I would be very upset to see me die. I'm actually quite attached to myself. But we don't know the answer to this question. We don't know if there's going to be a way that we can make even make a copy of ourselves. Now, ideally, what we would do is not copy ourselves, because again, that still means the primary version of you goes away. What we would do is find a way to actually transport our consciousness from our bodies into a computer. But if we do that, then we have all these other questions to answer. For example, if I can have a digital version of myself in a computer, could I merge a digital version of myself with a digital version of, say, my wife? Would we become one person? Would we become a single consciousness that combines everything that makes us, us? And would us become I? Who knows? For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.